it's such an important point you're bringing up here about how this is not a, a diet of sacrifice of food that doesn't taste good. And as a matter of fact, your taste buds will come alive. So can you talk to us a little bit about how that happens and how you know, processed foods are you know, impacting people's ability to enjoy natural flavors? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Oh, absolutely. We always talk about building our taste muscle back. And that, you know, you know I have a retreat in San Diego because, you know, being in, as a, in practice for more than 35 years, you feel like a little bit of a loss, disappointed people who you've impacted who then didn't follow the program and they call you from like an emergency room after a heart attack or something and they say, Dr. Furman, I should have listened to you. I know you said I was going to have a heart attack if I didn't change diet. And I just I had the heart attack and now can you help me? I'm saying, oh God, you're in, a, you're in an emergency room. You're in that ICU calling me now? And you didn't do what I told you to do? God, you know. So it's like, it, it, there's so many of, so much of that of people who, you know, gain weight back. And so I, you know, I wanted to make sure I have like enough services to, to reach people. And, and some people just need extra help, right? So we're, so I'm teaching them this connectiveness and this to enjoy this to get rid of their food addictions to not dabble in self-destructive habits that suck them outside of their comfort zone you know do you know build these good habits enjoy the so in other words i don't know how i got into that but here at the re, my retreat people stay here for two to three months they lose lots of weight but they change their outlook mm -hmm. they change their outlook towards food they oh we were talking about taste muscle yeah they build back and then they come in they're not that, you know, they like the food, but it's not, you know, we have four great chefs, but they're, but it's when they're here a couple of months that they really go, wow, these chefs up their game. This is really good. <laughs> it's the same recipe. They didn't up their game. You upped your taste muscle. Yeah. But, but it's the, the highly sweet deaden your taste for sweets. The high salt deadens your taste for salt you're used to. And the, even food that's too overly spiced. Like they, you put too many Mexican and Indian spices and they can't enjoy the, some of the subtle flavors of foods. They've, over, they've deadened their taste buds with too much food. And, and, you know, when you eat things that are too hot, now I'm not talking about spicy hot. I'm talking about heat hot, like a tea that's steaming or a soup that's boiling hot. It can cause micro damage to the oral mucosa and the tongue and increasing risk of tongue and throat cancer and also decrease taste as well. So we're talking here about eating things that are too like burnt, like sipping really hot tea and hot coffee has been damaging to the oral mucosa, increasing risk of, of, of cancer of the, of the throat and tongue, um, the chronic exposure to those, to microburns. And then a high salt diet has an effect to cause microburns too. It causes, um, they call it um, pinpoint or microvascular hemorrhages, that salt becomes a chronic irritant to the digestive tract. Um, leading to actually weakening of the of the blood vessels in the in the um, causing eventually you know as you age for like fifty to eighty years old you can have a, a hemorrhage in your brain that you bleed into the brain can kill you or put you into a stroke the rest of your life from the chronic use of overuse of salt irrespective of its effect on high blood pressure I'm saying salt doesn't just raise high blood pressure it causes other damage to the body and it also decreases your taste for other substances I mean you're chronically adjusted to a high salt diet. The body uses its homeodynamic system to be able to excrete the extra salt through the sweat and increasing, increasing extra salt through the urine. In the process, you're losing other valuable minerals with the sodium that you're pulling out. So the excess salt is excreting sodium and other. So a healthy person, you can lick your underarm. Not that I do that too often. <laughs> But I'm real thirsty. <laughs> oh my gosh! But there's no salt in the there's no salt in your sweat. You know, you you can go on a hike and play tennis for hours, and you're not going to need to rehydrate with with electrolytes. Water is good enough because you're not sweating out electrolytes. You don't have electrolytes in your sweat. You're holding on to your electrolytes. Your legs aren't cramping up. You and I know we could we could go for a long time in exercising and sweating, and no problem at all. I even I walked um. I, I climbed up a mountain 5.7 miles yesterday, and I hardly sweated. Um, but I mean, you know, compared to people that are dripping wet and they're, and they're getting cramps in their legs, you know, but whatever. But of course, the, it's, it's the point is, what I'm saying is that over time, people's taste buds improve and their body's use of sodium changes. So they're holding on to electrolytes better. And now they're and they're not able, and they're able to taste the sodium or the salt in their natural food better. So food has a heightened flavor. So this so all this thing works together. But it takes time. It takes time. And I, you know, because I thought when I was in practice for many years, the first ten years I was in practice, I used to tell people it takes about two or three months. 
And then I did a study on seven, more than 750 people. We tracked how much they liked eating this way and they didn't really like eating the diet better, as much or better than their old diet until the six month, trans, most people transitioned in five or six months. So it took longer than I had thought for most when I interviewed, when I surveyed about more than 700 people. Um, so it takes a while, but it doesn't mean it's black, it all of a sudden flips. You're getting better all the time, but it's, it still maximizes the longer you're on it and you're learning more recipes too, and your body is, is changing biochemically.